Fiction is a homage to Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Three puppeteers with about 17 marionettes. But in a nutshell, it's um, puppets with heroin overdoses, um, shot off faces, and dance scenes. Mm. Yeah, someone. <laughs> Everybody be cool! This is a fucking puppet show! <laughs> I wanted to do something to do with Pulp Fiction, whether it was a puppet show, whether it was art or anything, but um, yeah, I've always wanted to do a, a proper puppet show. I just kind of like seeing the magic of when they come to life and you can see all the little bits and bobs and all the, um, the hooks and staples and double-sided tape that's holding everything together and just to see them perform the way they do, I think, um, I think it's just kind of magical. Well, acting is really hard, mm -hmm. really hard. Yeah, and you get a lot of criticism in the industry, you know, mm. oh, you're wooden. Mm. Oh, it's like you're it's all I ever inanimate. Hear. Oh, you yeah. haven't got much facial expression mm. range, all that kind of shit. Mm. Fucking, you know what, I just don't read reviews anymore. Mm. Do you? Mm. Oh, no, 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 not yeah. at all. No, we generally we don't. I mean, there's a few that still read them, but mm. I just think it's a load of shit. The puppets themselves are pretty sophisticated in terms of the, the sculpting of their faces and stuff. John's a beautiful um, artist and sculptor, so he, like, the puppets themselves are beautiful little works of art. I mean, tell me about it. I, every show I'm getting basically a double mastectomy after the mm, show every mm, time, you know? Mm, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of boob jobs going on over here. There ain't nothing real left over mm, here, I tell mm, you that. But mm, uh, they look good. Mm, I'll tell yeah. you what, they look good. <laughs> tell me about it, No, yeah. that puppeteer, he has got a knack for mm. sculpting norks. Mm -hmm, That's all mm -hmm. I'm gonna say. Quite often in the show, we're about to do a scene where, that everybody knows, is, is quite familiar with. And I will hear people in the audience go, no, how are they going to do that? Because it is ridiculous and impossible in many ways. I don't like to uphold people's expectations. I want to blow them apart. And this is a nice way to do it, I think. <laughs> yeah. It's that childhood part of your brain. Uh, puppets kind of tap into I think that childhood nostalgia, even if you didn't grow up with puppets, they're perceived as a toy, and so they tie into that kind of look. And so you've got a little bit of, I don't know, I think your brain kind of throws a bit of the innocence of childhood into the situation, like, oh my gosh, I'm watching a puppet show, but it's the most wrong puppet show you've ever seen in your life. Remember, I just got back from Amsterdam. Vincenzo, am I a nigger? <gasps> no, I'm a ginger. Eat, me, my, mom, get you. The God came down from heaven and, and stopped the bullets. Bang! Oh, 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 oh. Crouch! Crouch! Touch! Crouch! Touch! Engage! It's a really, really naughty art form. Because the puppets, we discovered early on, the puppets can be so rude. And people love it. There's something that you can deliver, you can deliver stuff through puppets that you would never be able to get away with saying. We do a lot of uh, regular kind of anal bleaching because there's a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, the rapists are always mm -hmm. around. So you gotta, you gotta hold you gotta look on your to your best. Yeah, yeah, you gotta look your best down there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're always hoping to come visit, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The thing about puppets is, because they are not real and you, you know they're not real and uh, 
it takes a, a lot of sort of investing of, of imagination into them that they become really real in your mind. When you're looking at the puppet and the relationship with the puppet, um, you're kind of giving the audience permission to go into the puppet's world? I mean, it, it's kind of confronting being on stage, um, speaking to an audience. Uh, but with the puppet, you can just sort of flow everything through that. So, you know, if, if you make a mistake, it's the puppet's fault. They don't really trust us. We, we know what we're doing. I think their the nerves are, you know, way out of whack. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But, they get know. really worked up. Sometimes they argue, you mm, know. My mm. puppeteer gets really fucking wound up about any little thing. It's mm. so stupid. God, mm -hmm. I just tell her, just fucking relax. Mm -hmm. Dude, got a good show. Just trust me. You know, she never listens. You know, yeah. you know what a puppeteer is like. The thing I like about marionettes and doing a tabletop performance is the immediacy with your audience. The role that the audience play is they're, they're the engine. And that makes sense. We can't. We can just stand there and do the show, but we feed off their energy. If they're not giving us anything, then it's going to be a flat show. Because of the comedy nature of it, um, you need to feel like the audience are coming on this journey with you. For he is truly the brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and fury. And the more they come on the journey, the bigger you can make the journey. Because it's a live show, the audience is right there. And if something goes wrong, and if you acknowledge that it's gone wrong, then there's a lovely kind of honesty between you. The whole show is a malfunction, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've had, um, whose nose fell off? Hmm. Is that pumpkin? Uh, I think that was Honey Bunny. Oh, it was yeah, Honey yeah, Bunny. Yeah. yeah, the center of her face fell oh, off one yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's a bit of a fucking mess anyway, mm, to be honest. Better. But um, yeah, that was pretty funny. We're not too worried about breaking things because it's half the fun of the show. When things go wrong, it's a better show. How did her and Marcellus meet? I don't know, the way people usually meet. Mm. Uh, it used to be an actress or something. Did she do anything out of song? Uh, sorry, I'm confused by my own broken wrists. Mm. <laughs> The bits that go wrong are so important to show is because if you want to see uh, Pulp Fiction, you just watch the film, you know? And that's not what we are. Like, we're a puppet show trying to do Pulp Fiction, and part of the charm is in the trying. Five guys up there? It's possible. We should have fucking shotguns. Hmm. Uh, or bigger hands or something. Uh, I wouldn't complain if you made the puppets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To be honest, we don't make enough money of this show to like make us. This is the show we do out of love around all the other shows that we do. And you come back to it because you love it and you love seeing the audience respond to it. I was nervous as all hell doing this, um, being sort of a creator and um, artist sort of thing where I don't think my work is good enough all the time. So I don't know, I just I wasn't sure if this was right or not. John was just so right, it's such a great idea. <laughs> so there are moments where you go like, is this worth it? Like, and then there are moments where you don't question it at all and it is completely worth it. When you've got Jules the Puppet doing the famous diner scene, you can drop a pin on the audience. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be a shepherd. Hear that? That's a captive audience, motherfucker. <laughs> and after all the chaos that we've put them through, to be able to know that you've still got an audience grip like that, that's cool, man. None of our actors were experienced puppeteers, not even John was an experienced puppeteer when we went into this. But I would quite happily say that they really are puppeteers now. They've really mastered that craft, and it's, it's a really beautiful thing to watch. 